Welcome back, everyone. Yesterday, we told you about a South Florida man who took his own life after signing over ownership of his home while facing foreclosure. Tonight, NBC6 investigator Amy Materi takes you inside the legal fight that property of that for that property, which has dragged on for more than a decade. My dad was worth so much more than a late payment on a mortgage in Coral Springs, Florida. Emotionally, I just can't accept. Was it worth it, everybody? Scott Anderson says his father, Stuart, was depressed when he took his own life in 2016, stressed over an ongoing foreclosure on a property he thought he had sold. He had seen advertisements and heard advertisements for something called Cash for Keys. It was back in 2012 when Stuart signed over the deed to his home in Coral Springs to a company called First Capital Land Trust in exchange for $2,500. His son alleges in a lawsuit, First Capital promised to pay all debt associated with the property. Did they deliver on that promise to your, you say? No, no, no. In fact, we found out later that the gentleman was uh, under a settlement agreement with the Federal Trade Commission that he had been part of a very large telemarketing scam. That settlement didn't take place until a year after Stewart signed over his home. But we learned the FTC had already been investigating the company. They alleged several companies, including First Capital Land Trust and its then owner, Lazaro Din, preyed on financially distressed homeowners, charging them up to $750 a month that was supposed to get them legal help to fight foreclosure. As part of their settlement, Din and First Capital were barred from doing mortgage relief work. He did not do that here. He paid for the house. So it's a very different transaction. In Stewart's case, First Capital became the owner of the home, but not the mortgage payments, which records show went unpaid. Fast forward 11 years, the bank has been trying to foreclose all this time, and First Capital is still fighting to keep the house. It's no surprise it cost them just $2,500, but we learned it's been a moneymaker, bringing in rental income for years. But their end game is not the foreclosure. Their end game is the process. The longer the process undergoes, the more revenue they collect by renting the house. We kept getting letters in the mail. I told my husband, this house has been in foreclosure since 2011. Michelle Groats says her family rented the home from 2015 to early 2017. If it's in a foreclosure status, where's my money going? She says she was making payments to a company called Premier Rental Management. We looked into Florida business records and found that company is listed as the registered agent for First Capital Land Trust. We couldn't find a working website for either, but both companies list their principal address as this location in Fort Lauderdale. So we came to check it out in person. But when we showed up, what we found wasn't what we expected. Is Premier Rental Management even a company that is real. We discovered the address is for a mailbox inside this shop on Las Olas Boulevard. We found that same mailbox associated with several other companies, including a real estate investment business managed by Lazaro Din, shown here on the company's website, the same person who owned First Capital when Stewart signed over his home. And the most recent annual report for First Capital is signed by Han Din, Lazaro's wife. We spoke with the couple separately over the phone and each said they are no longer involved with First Capital Land Trust. And records showing Han's affiliation with the company are a mistake. Both ended the calls before answering any more questions. Your Honor, we're going to obviously appeal this. Bruce Botsford, the attorney representing the company, didn't want to talk to us either and told me, quote, you can leave me out of this one. In late September, a judge ruled in favor of U.S. Bank, authorizing the foreclosure sale. When we visited the house that rainy day, it appeared empty. A bittersweet relief for Scott. And as long as First Capital Land Trust is making any more money off of it, I'm good with that. But the sale was postponed after First Capital filed a motion in court. When we visited again in November, we discovered a new family was renting the home. They told us, just like the Grote family, they had no idea about the pending foreclosure. Well, how are they still operating? I that is what I don't understand. Michelle told us she fell behind on her rent due to serious health issues and her family was eventually evicted. First Capital has denied Scott's allegations in court. The company asked the court to delay the sale of the home, but two weeks ago the judge denied that request, allowing the sale to move forward. Amy Viteri, NBC6 News.